All right, 25 summers, we back. Our last video, you spoke about the hunger strike. Did y'all go on strike from just eating the state food or eating everything? Meaning like y'all personal food also. No, the hunger strike was to prove to the administration that we didn't, we didn't want their food, the food they prepared for us. We didn't have anything to do with our own personal food that we had in ourselves. So did like they try to um, take y'all commissary during the strike because y'all wouldn't eat the state food, or is there any repercussions if y'all don't eat it? Like they gotta cook it and throw it away. Like how does that work? Yeah, they, they that's what really made them upset because they prepared food for a large amount of inmates and then nobody takes the food. But they never came at us with the food. What we did was a few of the brothers and myself had food in abundance, such as like 25, 30 cans of tuna fish you know, salmon, 40 cans of salmon, and we looked out for the fellow brothers that was around us and gave them all stuff to hold them for a few days until we our demands was reached with the hunger strike. Um, so they never tried to force feed anybody that, uh, if you just if you decide to go on strike, is it just strike or is there like repercussions for not eating? Do they lock y'all down because of it, or how does that work? When the when the, when the, when the whole mass when the whole population participates in a lockdown, it's it's more serious. So they treat it more serious. But individuals go on the individual uh, strikes and don't eat food and all of that. Then they removed and they sent to the infirmary and then. Upon doctor's orders, man, they even force fed intravenously or whatever their situation was. But those individual cases are inmates being force fed. But when it's a whole and the whole population take place in a food strike, no, it's just the sit in, back to the cell, and from there every every meal after that until some of the demands are met or heard. Do they still prepare the food for the inmates? Knowing that y'all on strike, do they still prepare the food for the right. jails on that day? Yeah, they prepare the meals, all three meals for the day because at any time they, they realize that it can break and then the inmates is ready to eat and they on the line. So they are preparing the meals, but a lot of the meals, like for the next two days, which I would say like six meals, well, being boycotted. So they're actually making it and then they're, and then they're throwing it away. Okay. Um, let's talk about the differences. The difference is rather on how inmates are treated when they come into prison, like a young inmate versus an old inmate, a white inmate versus an Indian inmate, somebody who's part of a group. I don't know, maybe he's part of the um, Bloods or he's yeah. from the Aryan Nation. What are the differences in how people are treated, young and old, and by race and affiliation when they come to prison? What, what are the differences? Yeah, the officers are selective, man, because if a young cat comes in, Nine times out of ten, man, he migrates towards the gangs. And from there, he's part of a gang. But the older guys that come in, if they're white guys, they usually gravitate towards the Aryan Brotherhoods or the white supremacist brothers, all the brothers that's in, into that type of religious thing. And they all are individualized, and then they hang with each other. But mostly the officers will treat the younger ones a little more harsh and different because they figure that they're a little bit more wild then the older brothers are coming in and joining up with the sectors of their own race and nationality. So is there a difference how people view a young inmate versus maybe a seasoned 50 year old that's been going to prison all mm -hmm. his life? Like how is the the adjustments with yeah, young the 50, versus the 50 year old will get a lot more respect because he know how to, what you call bid. He knows how to do his time rather than the time doing him opposed to a younger brother is coming in. He's fresh. He's new. He doesn't really know too much about the penitentiary system. So he's subject to doing a lot of wild, wilder things and getting in a lot of more trouble early on in his in his stay in prison. So yeah, the older brothers are being treated differently with a little bit more respect. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, let's talk about people checking into PC, protective custody voluntarily not people who are put in because they you know committed offense like mm -hmm. people that check in voluntarily is it like because they get in trouble mm -hmm. or they might feel the heat coming from another inmate they may have beef with somebody that comes to the prison does mm -hmm. that happen it might be over gambling debts or mm -hmm. anything so let's talk a little bit about voluntarily checking in okay let me explain custody. two things one is voluntarily involuntary 
we'll talk on voluntarily first. Voluntarily protective custody is when a prisoner uh, has some type of problem, man, such as facets of gambling, gambling in the, in the penitentiary yard, and then the bet, and then the debt um, goes up, and then they end up having to pay large amounts of money that they don't really have. The involuntarily comes for a way of they may take go to the cell and realize, yo, this is panic mode. What should I do? Uh, I don't have all of this money to pay. Money meaning packs of cigarettes. Cigarettes is another way for money, as I explained before, and also stamps. So now these build up into the hundreds and the hundreds and the person can't pay it. So now this is where the involuntary voluntarily comes in. They'll go in the cell and they'll take a piece of paper and a letter and they'll drop a slip to the administration. The administration, by way of being the superintendent, which is be the warden of the facility, and tell them that uh, I believe that my life is in danger. I believe that somebody's going to get me, one of the inmates is going to get me, without telling the truth to the fact, just enough for the administration to investigate and take them out of the population circuit and put them into an involuntary circuit which we will give will provide them with more protection until they can be either transferred to another facility or find out whether their allegations was true or not oh so that would be considered like dry checking in just like dry mm -hmm. dry snitching yeah right? you basically dry snitch a situation on yourself and get yourself into a, a situation where you tell the officers something fabricate the story to enough where they feel that your life is threatening and they'll take it seriously and they'll remove you from the population so the people that are doing that, sometimes I guess they'll just like take charges on purpose, like start with officers or start with other inmates to come do something that know that they'll get sent to PC for a lockup for, correct? No, that's not necessarily correct because you're not going to get sent to a PC lockup for starting an altercation with an officer or an inmate. That's where you're going to become involuntary PC. The two, I was going to explain the difference. One was voluntary PC and the other one's involuntary. We touched on voluntary where the person feels that his life is in danger and then he goes and he tells and drops a slip about he thinks he's going to be hurt, killed, stabbed or whatever and then he's taken and removed from population. Now, involuntary PC is something that comes from way of an inmate might, uh, what we call, it's a doja move, man. You might jump on somebody they feel is weakless, harmless, and, and beat them up in front of a whole bunch of people and get apprehended and dragged out, then that becomes involuntary police because then the officers feel that the person he jumped on, life is in more danger than his. So then he'll be put into involuntary protective custody.